Who is this guy? Who is Bonnie Prince Charlie? Well, he was a young guy, he was 25 years old. Right. And he picked up that nickname when he was in Edinburgh, and the girls saw him and said, well, look at that Bonnie Prince. And they're He's after a good looking guy. The, they're after the name stuck. So who is he in their family? So what happened was that James II, who was Bonnie Prince Charlie's grandfather, was chased from the throne of the UK. OK, so this uprising is like a real-life Game of Thrones, but with way more characters and fewer dragons. So buckle up. It's 1603, and Scotland and England unite under this guy, James Stuart, King of Scots. The throne passes to his son, Charles I, but being king kind of goes to his head, which promptly gets lopped off. And things only go downhill from there. His son, Charles II, is a king in name only, and this dude, Oliver Cromwell, a.k.a. Tywin Lannister from Game of Thrones, holds the real power. Charles II dies suddenly. Some say he's poisoned, which is like the number one way to kill kings for some reason, and his brother, James II, takes the throne. James here may have a heavy metal wig, but he's also a Catholic, which means the Church of England isn't exactly a fan. So in 1688, they give him the boot, and he's shipped off to France. See you later, have fun, enjoy the croissants. Supporters of the exiled king calling themselves Jacobites launch a series of failed rebellions. Fast forward to 1745, and here's where our guy comes in, Bonnie Prince Charlie. Yay! He's the grandson of the exiled king, and he sails from France back to Scotland to mount a final effort to reclaim his family throne. Prince Charlie promises the clan chiefs that they'll have financial and military support from the French, an arrangement he'd made while still in exile. But the crucial aid has yet to arrive, so instead of pressing forward, Charlie is forced to retreat. The rebels withdraw all the way to Inverness with the British in pursuit. They face off at the brutal Battle of Culloden. Decimated by a bigger, better equipped army, 1,500 Highlanders fall in less than an hour. The uprising is crushed. Prince Charlie and his troops flee for their lives. Two weeks after the Battle of Culloden, while the prince and his rebels are scattered and running for their lives, the gold promised by the French finally arrives, too late to save the rebellion. Six big chests of gold were brought ashore here at this very same beach. Today, those coins would be worth tens of millions of pounds. OK, I'd like that. Yeah. So where do we go? I think I've got a fair idea of where we could find that gold. Really? Yeah. 